Lieutenant Lionel Coffin had flown 25 missions co-piloting a B-29, delivering supplies from India to China. He wouldn't finish his 26th mission. He remembers an explosion on board his plane over Burma. Our radio operator, uh, Montgomery, uh, saying, God, my God, my hand. And uh, I had looked around and I saw that his hand had been ripped off or just hanging by a tendon. Uh, I looked at the instrument panel and number three was pulling no power. Number four, I didn't know what was the matter with that. I was going to feather number three and of course the first thing you think about is getting the, keeping the airplane flying. If we didn't do that, we'd lose everything. And uh, as I turned around, number three engine had already vanished. It wasn't on the airplane. Uh, there was a raging fire there in that wing and there was also gas in the bomb bays. Uh, the only engine we had doing us any good was number one, and we had the airplane in a slight bank, about 15 degrees, and we'd gone down to 140 knots, uh, but the airplane would fly at that, so it gave everybody a chance to get out. Coffin and his crew were captured hours later by the Japanese, prodded by rifles, marched through local communities. It would not be easy for them since they were flyers. The Japanese considered them to be criminals since Japan was being slowly reduced to rubble by airmen who delivered those bombs. One of the Japanese tried to take the ring off my finger and I clenched my fist and for some reason or other he didn't persist and I was able to keep my ring. That same ring you This have same ring I have now. Eventually they were put in solitary little cells with only rice in a dirty tin pan to live on. Although they couldn't see each other, Coffin says they could hear one another. So the prisoners of war had a Bible reading every night in solitary confinement. God sent me verses of scripture every day that I had learned when I was 10 years old, 11 years old in Sunday school. Not a whole bunch, but one for every day, and I could prepare a sermon to give to those people. Coffin remembers one American pilot wasted away to just 50 pounds before he died. There were no clean clothes, and six months passed before he could take a bath. The worst part was the lice in the clothing. Well, then we found that if we took those clothes during the day and put them on a red ant hill outside, and the red ants were about an inch long, they would come in and take these eggs that had been laid and clean our clothes for us. Except once in a while, we'd leave a red ant in there, and they would bite like mad. Coffin developed open sores on his legs, struggled with diarrhea and malnutrition, and then there were the beatings by their captors. And between every blow that we got, it was, it was like there was a hand in between. I don't remember being black and blue or bleeding or anything else, and we got beat up quite frequently. After two years, they woke up one day to an unguarded camp. The Japanese had fled as American troops neared the area. U.S. planes airdropped them supplies. His weight was down to 120 pounds. But on this day before his 80th birthday, Lionel Coffin is alive to tell of his ordeal. And how about the B-29 radio operator who lost his hand during the explosion? Coffin says he got gangrene and had to have his arm cut off at the elbow, amputated in a POW camp without painkillers. But that story, too, has a happy ending. He survived the war and became a one-armed clockmaker in California. As for Lionel Coffin, the first thing he did once he landed stateside was call his mom. And when I sent my telegram home, it got there by Mother's Day. <laughs> my mother had been, was an organist at uh, Chester Park, uh, now United Methodist Church, here, for 33 years. And uh, as the years went on, we would still find a piece of music where she had written on that day that <laughs> they'd gotten a telegram from son that he was going to be home and everything was okay. <laughs> and that piece of music would show up and that note would be on it.